For one mother, the pain of separation over. Seven-year-old Darwin was taken from Beata Mahia Mejia at the border in Arizona. They come from Guatemala. Now, after more than a month, she could finally hold him again. She sued the government for her son's return and won. I started crying when I saw him because he's the only child I have. I thank God because I have him here with me. He's now sad, but nobody's going to separate us again. But though Donald Trump signed an executive order halting the separation of children from their families, thousands still face the pain of separation and no one knows when they will be reunited. The executive order of President Trump does not solve the problem. We still face the reality of at least 2,300 of these young children who have been separated. And there's nothing, he said nothing, about what we're going to do to reunite them or to take care of them during this period of time. Donald Trump started the day with a series of tweets urging Republicans to ditch plans to pass new immigration legislation, saying Republicans should stop wasting their time on immigration until after we elect more senators and congressmen, women, in November. This just days after he demanded Congress sort the problem out. Then he hosted so-called angel families, people who had relatives killed by undocumented migrants. These are the American citizens permanently separated from their loved ones. Highlighting he's not backing away from his hardline immigration stance. Once and for all, we want safety in our country. We want strong borders. We want people to come in, but we want them to come in the proper way. Early on Friday, protesters surrounded the home of Homeland Security Secretary Christian Nielsen and played at full volume a recording of children after they'd been separated from their parents at the border. It's been a difficult week for Donald Trump, but with no deal on immigration in sight and no clarity on what now needs to happen on the border, next week isn't looking good either. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Washington.